All right, what is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode Podcast Weekly Real Estate Tip, where every single week I come to delivering different tips, tactics, strategies, information that I've learned on my 20-plus year-long real estate journey that allowed me to become one of the top realtors and team leaders on the planet with selling well over 7,000 homes and sharing this information with you so that you can take this knowledge, implement inside your own real estate business and inside your life and go out there and create that real estate business, that life that you know you truly want and deserve. So right, with that being said, let's dive on in. So today I'm here to talk to you about the most effective way to go out there and set goals that you strategically can accomplish. You know, if you're anything like me, you know, I used to spend so much time developing all these goals, but then it was like, man, I was just a process I'd go through. And then I had year after year of unmet goal, unmet goal, unmet goal, you know? Um, so I had to go out there and figure out, man, how do I effectively goal plan, set goals, set targets, and then what is that structure? What is that strategy? What is that overall protocol and process? So then I can be effective at implementation, making these goals, turning these goals into the, to a reality. Because what's the point of having goals if we can't turn them into a reality? Then we're just freaking daydreaming. And then we're just mentally masturbating. So you have to make sure that you're not mentally masturbating and instead making your goals an overall reality. So today I got seven different steps that I'm going to walk you through. Now, whether you're watching this on YouTube or listening to this on, on all the different platforms that we're at here on the audio with the podcast, you know, um, my recommendation is that you get out a pen and paper um, and take notes here. And if you can, I mean, you can, I'm designing this so you can kind of do this as I walk you through this to help you go out there and, and do a deep dive uh, into this. Okay. So with that being said, let's dive on in. Okay. So number one, first thing, to, this was a huge mistake I made and a big mistake that I see the vast majority of people making. Right. So, so this is something that we want to avoid. And so this is really, really important. So do not discount this step because if you get this step wrong, this is probably the number one reason as to why so many goals become unmet. And that is because a lot of times we set goals that are not our own actual true goals. So your goals. So step number one is making sure that you are taking the time to make sure that your goals are your own. It is so easy to go out there and adopt goals that are other people's for our own lives. And I get it. You know, it's like as soon as I started really reflecting on this, I'm like, look, man, we are just domesticated this way. It's like, you know, you're born, you come in this world and you quickly realize that, oh, dude, mom, dad, a happy life is good. Then you start school. Yo, okay, mom, dad's happy. Like life is good. Getting good grades. My teacher's happy. Like, okay, if mom, dad are happy, my teachers are happy. Life is good. You know, and then it gets to the point where, okay, maybe get involved in sports. Okay, mom, dad are happy. My teacher's happy. My coaches are happy. Life is good. Oh, then now I, you know, add friends in my peer group. And, you know, it's like, like we spend this time like just appeasing and pleasing everybody else, you know, um, and life is good. And then, you know, then at some point we just get thrown out into the freaking water and, and it's like, okay, go figure this shit out on your own. And most people just, you know, uh, uh, sink in, instead of swimming, you know, where it's like, okay, your whole life, you've been domesticated 18, 24 years, you know, however long that time frame is. Um, and now you got to figure out for the first time in your life of like, what is it that you want? Right. Cause I'm going to here to tell you, man, if your goals are not your own, if this is something that isn't truly, truly important to you, the probability of you making it a reality is very, very low. And then from there, equally as bad, you invest all this damn time. Cause I do, I wasted the first, I don't know, half of my career doing this, you know? Um, uh, so up until probably about, I was 30 years old. So first 30 years of my life, pretty much for the most part, um, I wasted my life by doing this. You know, you get to a point where it's like, okay, like I was accomplishing this goal, accomplishing this goal, accomplishing this goal. And then I realized, man, I'm still unfulfilled. You know, uh, I didn't feel like what I thought maybe it'd feel like when I accomplished this goal, you know, but then I realized, man, these goals were never mine. Like the, these were, you know, these were society's goals for me. This was fucking Facebook or Instagram's goals for me. This was, you know, my spouse's goal for me. This is my parents' goal for me. This was, you know, to, to appease and please everybody else based on societal terms, societal standards, you know, um, um, these were their goals. They weren't my goals, right? Like, so no wonder I'm not fulfilled after putting all this time, energy, work, blood, sweat, and tears, and now I've just lost 30 years of my life to go out there and create shit that I didn't actually even want, right? And I, 
maybe you've heard me share this experience with you guys, but um, when I was in my early 20s, I was a nurse's aide at a, at a hospital in Michigan. And I spent a lot of my, I was afloat. So that means I'd float to different departments. But a lot of my time, the majority of my time was spent on the hospice floor, you know, during the couple of year period of time that I worked there. Um, so in that, in the hospice, like my job was to, you know, keep the patients comfortable. Like I'd spend 12 hours just hanging out with people on their deathbed, like every day, like as far as working days, 12 hour shifts, just hanging out with people on their deathbed. Yeah. Right. Um, and it was an amazing experience, right? It's very hard experience. Uh, because I'd get to know a lot of them, develop great relationships with them, you know, connect, you know, whatever. And, and when they passed away, you know, right. Like my job as a nurse's aide, like, and this is one of the hard parts about not only did you get to know somebody and develop a relationship and connection with somebody and they pass away, you know, that's hard and seeing their families going through the pain and all that's hard, you know, um, but then like, I'd have to like wash their bodies and bring them down to the morgue. And, and, you know, there's some, you know, it's very rewarding, very amazing job, but definitely hard parts of it. Um, but during that time, and look, I don't know if it was just my personality. Cause I really, like, I love people. Like I love talking with people and having conversations with people and learning about people. And like, I just really like people. Um, so I don't know if it's my personality type or if it was that, Hey, I was in my early twenties and they were wanting to share life advice with, you know, a young man. Um, or, you know, maybe it was because, you know, I developed a, a connection with them, but I wasn't a family and friend that could be open and honest with me. But of the hundreds, if not thousands, I was never keeping tally at this point. But if the hundreds, if not thousands of conversations that I had, I didn't have anybody ever. And one of those conversations where these are people on their deathbed be like, life was amazing. Life was epic. I'm ready for the next journey, whatever that may be. I didn't have anybody say that to me. Every one of those conversations was a shoulda, woulda, coulda. You know, oh, man, I wish I would have you know, went after my dream, dream job or dream business. Wish I would have, you know, travel more. Wish I would have been a better father, better, better husband, better mother, better grandfather, you know, right. Wish I would have traveled more. Wish I would have, you know, sometimes wish I would have married, you know, I, I married the person that my, you know, my parents really want. I didn't actually marry, you know, marry the true love of my life. It was just this regret after regret, after regret, after regret. And you could see the pain in their eyes of all this pain and regret, you know, um, and that's what life leads to when we are not being intentional about identifying what is it that we really want? Like, who am I or anybody else to tell you, like, who the hell are we to tell you what your, what success for your life should be? And it's harder today. This is so damn hard today. And why? Because of these extra appendages that we have of these freaking cell phones, you know, where, where like, you know, I mean, it is now like an appendage. It's a part of us. You know, people get all freaked out when they talk about the infusion of, you know, technology and human beings and not saying that they shouldn't get freaked out about that. That might be something to very validly get freaked out about, but I'm like, we're, we're already there. You know, right. Like do like people will, would way rather lose their wallet than their phone. Yeah. Right. Um, like people can't like, you know, you watch most people, like if they lose their phone or, you know, can't find like freak the hell out, you know, this has become a damn a, appendage, you know? Um, so then, but what does that do? What all this social, you know, all, all this technology, this is external stimuli, you know, right. This is external shit feeding our brains, right. That then craft our, our perception of life. Like the life that you think that you're living is not really the life that you're living, right? Like, I know that sounds kind of funky, kind of weird, um, but it's, and we don't need to get into that, right? I'm not trying to make this a philosophical freaking podcast here, but the point is, is it's, you got to be more intentional about deciphering and breaking down. What is it that you truly want? What do you want? Why do you want it? Why it's important to you? What is it that you want for you and your life? I'll remove everybody else. This is your game right? This is your life, right? Like, what do you want for you? Now, I'm not saying like, look, I am married. I got kids. I'm not saying that. Um, I have people, uh, 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 you know, like Ashley, who's my team manager, first, first employee I ever brought on, been with me for almost 20 years. You know, that lady has sacrificed so much and put up with so much of my shit over the years. And, you know, um, um, and I do anything for, you know, or, you know, I, like I have people that also I'm choosing to go out there and you know, make decisions for and set goals like, like, you know, that I'm living for as well. But at the same point, I also have, like, I, I, I look at this and this might sound bad to some of you. Um, you know, but this is just what's worked for me, man. Um, is like, look, yes, I have kids, but I was also me before I had kids and eventually my kids are going to grow up and have their own lives. 
You know, right? So I, I got to know, like, what, what are my goals, dreams, and visions? Like, my job of being a father isn't to sacrifice all my dreams, goals, and visions just to create, you know, opportunities for my kids. It's actually the opposite of that. Yeah, right? Then again, I'm not trying to share my belief system. I mean, this is just my beliefs. You can take this with a grain of salt if you choose to. You know, um, but my observation, everybody I've ever met that went out there and sacrificed their dreams, goals, and visions for their kids, what did their kids end up doing? Kids end up doing the same thing. Well, our mom and dad did this. So now I'm going to sacrifice my dream job or my dream career, go take the safe route. So then that way I can provide stability for my, my family. I mean, that's what my parents did. And I'm going to do this for my kids. So they have a better opportunity than I have kids freaking mimic. Yeah. You know, I've just learned this in leadership, whether I'm, you know, leading a group of agents with a brokerage or a team, you know, or leading, you know, my family or whatever, like they, they don't do what we say. They do what we do. They mimic, you know, so I need my kids to walk. Like if I, if it's really important for me to have my kids go after their goals, dreams, and visions, and if I'm, you know, kind of purporting that message to them and want them to do that, well, then I've just discovered in life it's really important for them to see their dad doing the same damn thing. Yeah, right. And I'm not saying to do that and become an absentee father, but like, you know, like that's not part of my goals and that's not part of what I do, right? Like I'm going to make sure I'm going after my dreams, goals, and visions while I'm still being a great father and, you know, all those other things that are important to me. But the whole, whole point here, I'm kind of going off tangent here is your goals need to be your own. So how do you go out there and do that? Look, goals are found internally. Stop looking externally. I hear so many people like, well, how do I find what I want most? How do I find my purpose? Like, is there a book to read, Josh, of, of how to go out there and find my purpose? No, there is no damn book. There is no podcast. There is no YouTube video, right? This is going to be, this is an internal process. You, you were looking for external things because that's how we're used to, you know, like, okay, I got a problem. Let me go out and find the solution. Somebody's going to give me the fix that. So like, this is only a solution that you can find internal. You're going to have to unplug. If you have a difficult time on identifying what is most important to you, what do you want? Why do you want? And I'm going to walk you through some exercises here today that might be helpful. Um, but like you need to unplug. You might need to, you know, go up into the mountains for three days with no technology, no phone, no nothing. You might have to get and do a habit, um, you know, something that I've been doing for some time now that's been mind expanding for me. Um, I spend the first four hours of my morning with no technology, no smartphone, no technology, so, you know, while, you know, I do an hour walk, then I hit the gym for two hours, then I'm, you know, eating, meal prepping, getting ready for, to go into the office. So between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m., I don't allow myself to do anything other than just be with my own thoughts and be with my own self, have that solitude, have that introspect, uh, intro, uh, introspection. That's what it takes. Like, inter like the answers are within when it comes to this stuff, so, but you got to be willing to look within. And it's very difficult because today most people can't handle their own emotions are used to so suppressing their emotions and look it can be difficult work but if this is important to you and if you want to make your goals a reality you're going to have to go through and do this work um okay so don't let others tell you what you want for your life identify what you want for your life okay number two here start long term this is my recommendation right this is what's worked well for me and thousands of others that i put through this process so start long long term what do i mean by long term reverse engineer this stuff Okay, like I was telling you about earlier, I used to work on that hospice floor. So picture yourself, you're 84 years old, you're laying on your deathbed, there's no more time to go back and change anything, and you're rolling back the tapes on your life, and you're reflecting back and you're asking yourself, you know, um, what did I do or how did I do with this gift called life that I've been blessed with? Did I do something amazing and epic with it or did I piss it away? And then start writing down what those regrets are that you know that you will have if you do not accomplish within this one gift of a brief gift of life that we all have. And look, maybe there's a journey after this. I hope that there is, but I don't know that for a fact. You know, right? That's why we call it faith. All right. So, so, so I, you know, I'm going to hope for the best plan for the worst. Yeah. Right. Like, okay. I'm hoping there's an afterlife, but a plan for the worst. Okay. If there isn't, if this is all that there is, and I'm just going to shut my eyes, go into a freaking box and then this exit, there's no existence after this. Okay. I want to maximize this experience that I have, you know, with this possible life as well. So what must happen between now and boom, blink of an eye, I'm 84 years old, laying on my deathbed, no time to go back and do anything different, change anything. What must happen between now and then? What must I experience between now and then? For me to be like, hey, maybe I didn't accomplish all my dreams, goals, and visions, but I know I wasn't a spectator. I got on the field. I played ball. I did everything I possibly uh, could to go out there and create an epic life you know, for myself and for my family. Again, what must happen in order for that conversation to go, hey, I'm ready for the next journey, whatever that is. Life was amazing. Life was epic. Now I'm ready for the next journey, whatever that is. Versus 
shoulda, woulda, coulda, wish I had a do-over, dying with a heavy heart of regret. That's what I call the ultimate scoreboard question. What must happen with this one gift called life that you've been blessed with for you to die and leave this planet with no regrets, right? Um, so we want to just regret, it's regret minimalization. So then from there, now, I mean, you, like through each year that we live, we have different experiences. We discover what's important to us. On, and this is why I go through this process every single year. You know, I go through goal setting and, and all these things I'm walking through every single year, you know, because maybe I go out there and I start going down one path and I start going after a goal that I thought was really important to me. And I start going down that path and I realize, oh, fuck, this sucks. I don't really enjoy this. This isn't for me. And that happened to me before, you know, for a long time ago, I was like, oh, dude, I want to go out there and be a, a, a public speaker and get on the public speaking circuit and go out there and speak on these stages all throughout the country. And, and look, in 2017, I got heavy into the speaking circuit. I was, I traveled half that year. At one point, it was something like, I don't know. It was like 11, I don't know, 11 different states within like a two week period of time. I mean, I, I was living over half of my life out of a suitcase. And I realized, man, this sucks. I didn't enjoy, I thought I'd enjoy it. Like actually being on the stage was fun. But all the other stuff, I, you know, I'm like, well, dude, like now I'm becoming a, a, you know, kind of an absentee father. Like this isn't cool. You know, like maybe, maybe that's something that can become a goal later in my life once my kids are grown. But I realized very quickly, you know, it only took me about six months of being, you know, going down that path and journey to realize this is not what I want. Not at this season in my life. So then, you know, like, do things change? It's a box match. Got to roll the punch a little bit, right? We just kind of adjust things, you know, here and there is, is, is it goes, you know, with this. But to the best of your ability right now, like, okay, an example, like I know that I will regret not doing everything that I possibly could to be the best father and have the best relationships with my kids that I possibly can. So, so, okay, if that's a, if, if that's going to be a regret of mine, if I don't do everything I possibly can to do that. So then, okay, each year, what do I do, man? I, I mean, my kids are getting older and older and older when they were, you know, five and six and seven, I got three kids, you know, currently in the age of, I got a, you know, sixth grader, ninth grader and 11th grader, you know, um, so 16, 14 and 11. Well, when they were six, you know, let's just say, you know, six and under, they needed a different version of me to, as a father. You know, now at this age, they need a different version of me. And when they're in college, they're going to probably need a different version of me. And then when they start getting married and having their own kids, they're going to need a different version of me. Yeah, right. So like I always have growth that I can do to show up in the way that they need me to show up. And I can be that, you know, and, and, and do, you know, like I'm making decisions based off of that. And then now, right, all, all of these things. So, okay, like you, you, all of us can go out there and do this, but you got to take the time to map this out. So what, you, what your ultimate scoreboard question, like again, what must happen? Between now and boom, fast forward 84 years, because it's going to come blink of an eye, right? This is going to come quicker than you think, right? So blink of an eye, 84 years old, on your deathbed, what must happen between now and then, free to die with uh, no regrets. Okay, then number three, we're going to make a, two different lists. So to the best of your ability, I want you to make a long-term list. Now, these are all the long-term shit. Now, when I say long-term, that's going to be anything beyond 12 months. Yeah, right. Well, it can even be, you know, within within the next 12 months, but just a list of anything, no matter how quickly they can be achieved or how long they can be achieved, that you would like to do, experience, accomplish, have before you leave this world. And we're not just talking about material things. Yeah, right. Um, and but be careful with sometimes material things. Yeah, right. Like, okay, is it worth for you to go out there and sacrifice? You know, um, uh, like here's an example. Um, for a long time, I thought I wanted a private jet. You know, my mentors and, and, you know, friends that created a lot of success, they had all of these private jets. And, and I was like, dude, I, I, I want a private jet like that. I thought I really wanted that thing. You know, then I got to the point um, where I started shopping. I, I couldn't go out there and get like a $30 million, million dollar private jet. But, uh, you know, like I could go out there and get a private plane and, you know, started looking at it and thinking, you know. But then as I started going on the due diligence with it, I'm like, dude, this thing is going to be a huge pain in the ass for me. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, by the time I store it, you know, like all, all of this stuff, you know, and I, I, I was like, dude, like, I don't even want the private plane. I don't even like to travel. You know, like, I'm like, dude, I, I don't, I don't even like that. Like, I love my routine. My whole life is within a three mile radius. I don't, I don't even like to travel. So as I started mapping this out and breaking this down, and then I started looking at where am I going to go? What am I going to do with this? And then I was like, dude, I don't even want to do that. So I, I had set this goal and spent these years to get myself in a position where I could accomplish this goal to only realize, well, shit, I don't even care about that goal. That, I, I don't even want that goal. I, I would, I, that would be more of a headache than is worth having that thing. Um, um, it doesn't make sense for me. 
but it was a goal I started pursuing because all my mentors, you know, all these other people in my life, I thought that that's what success should look like. Right. But it wasn't what success was for me, you know, right. Um, so, so, you know, like be careful with these things. Again, this is why I want to make sure that they're important to you and they're that your own, but again, you'll, you'll know internally like, is this, you know, but like, what are those, what are those places that you must visit? You know, things that you must learn. Maybe there's a certain language you've always wanted to learn and you'd love to learn before you leave this planet. You know, what are those, you know, again, things you must do, those relationships that, you know, you want to build upon that are most important to you, the experiences that you want to have, all of those things. You know, right? so we're going to make, a, you know, we're going to start off with, so we're two lists. We're going to start off with a list of just everything between now and before you die. What are all those things that you want to do, accomplish, have, experience, see, you know, whatever. Then from there, within that list, I want you to identify those things that if you are focused, if you will operate with extreme intention and work your ass off, that you can make a reality within the next 12 months. So then now we got, you know, kind of our long-term bucket list, you know, uh, uh, you know, our goal list. And then boom, we got our immediate 12 month list that, I mean, all the other things will get accomplished, but now we got, okay, we're going to kind of forget about the other things. You know, right. I mean, our target now is the immediate list within the next 12 months of, you know, what we can make a reality, do everything we can to make those a reality. Um, and if we don't make those a reality and they're so important to us, okay, can we then maybe it takes us 24 months versus 12 months to accomplish those, but then we can keep moving things over in this list to be intentional, you know, of, of having the right targets. Okay. Then step number four, I want you to write a positive and a negative paragraph on everything, at least on your 12 month um, goal list now, right? So this is going to help solidify and ensure that these things are really important to you. You know, right? So, okay. The positive is going to be, okay. Once I've achieved this thing, once I've accomplished this, once I've achieved this thing, what is life now like? What is the positive outcome? How am I going to feel? How's it going to make me feel? How's life going to be? How's it, how's it going to positively impact me? How's it going to positively impact my family? Like all of those things. Then I want you to write a negative paragraph. Okay, if you fall short of this thing, if this thing doesn't become a reality, how are you going to feel? What's the negative consequences, the negative impacts? And, and here's the power of this is sometimes I've had goals where it's like, well, I guess if I don't hit this, it really doesn't fucking matter. So then I'm like, okay, well, if it doesn't really matter if I hit it or don't hit it, why is this a target that should like, this shouldn't even be, maybe this is one that slipped in that was society's goal for me. You know, when I say society, like somebody else, you know, somehow I adopted a goal that wasn't my own some way, shape, form, or fashion that got, that got slipped in there. I thought it was important to me, but as I've done some deeper, these paragraphs really help us gain that clarity on, you know, um, because like, like once you're visualizing life with, after this accomplished, like you're, you're going to have an emotion to it, right? You're going to feel it, a positive emotion and a negative emotion. But if it's a, eh, I don't know, just who gives, it doesn't really fucking matter whether it happens or doesn't happen. Like then we know, okay, that's a pretty good indicator that, man, that ain't a goal that's really important to us. And then we got to kind of go back to the drawing board, right? Um, okay. So now step number five is to develop a habit plan, AKA becoming plan. So the next thing that I want you to ask yourself, okay, now that we got your list of your 12 month goal, like your 12 month targets that you want to have a goal for, because before we set a business plan, strategy plan, we got to first have a habit plan. This is going to be your becoming plan um, because we don't make our goals a reality. We grow into the people that are capable of making our goals a reality. So I want you to ask yourself, okay, what are the habits, the routines, the rituals that you must adopt? What are the habits, routines, and rituals that you must break in order for these goals to become a reality? So who must you become that is capable of making these things a reality? You know, right? Like maybe you got to become somebody that operates with more urgency. Maybe you got to become somebody that does not procrastinate. Maybe you got to become somebody that gets up earlier. Maybe you got to become somebody that, you know, whatever it is, you know, um, um, so now we know, okay, what are the right habits, rituals, you know, behaviors that we need to adopt or the habits, rituals, behaviors, you know, that we need to cut out. I mean, I, uh, and this was, you know, about four years ago for me, maybe five years. Yeah. Well, no, it'd be four years this Halloween, um, uh, that I knew that, um, in order for me to get to the next level, I needed to eliminate alcohol from my life. You know, like I was a, a high functional alcoholic, but I was an alcoholic, man. And it was creating, you know, problems in a lot of different areas of life, you know, but it's starting to create problems in business. Um, I got my business to a certain level with doing it, you know, um, but then, okay, like I couldn't get beyond that level. Plus it was obviously creating, 
you know, um, negative relate, you know, a lot of stress on my marriage and, and, you know, setting example, like just acting like, you know, like wasn't leading in the way I wanted to lead for my kids and, and, you know, whatever. So I knew I had to eliminate that. So I became, you know, okay, boom, that became part of my, you know, habit plan was eliminating that substance, you know, um, had it work like two years ago, I was like, okay, I do, I got to give up all elements of TV, TV, movies, Netflix, Hulu. This is a distraction. Like I need to give this up you know, right to get to that next level. So that became, you know, a habit, routine, ritual I needed to break, you know? Um, so whatever these are, like, again, cause you're going to have to have, you're going to have to adopt positive habits and rituals and behaviors, and you're going to have to break negative ones because you're going to be doing shit that's prohibiting you from making your goals a reality, you know, and then you got to add new shit that is going to help you make those a reality. So we got to come up with what your habit slash becoming plan is. Okay. Step number six is a vision board. So on the vision board, out of sight, out of mind. So we want to keep this stuff like visual, right? So I recommend to on my vision boards, got mine right up here. You can't see it, but it's like, I get, I'm looking at this thing a hundred times a day. You know, right. It's always, you know, it's right to the left of my visual on my, my workstation here. Um, um, so think of this like a, a vision board in three different sections. You know, you got like this, you know, third, middle third, you know, the left third, middle third, and the right third. So all the way to the far left, that third of this is all like visual representations of all the lifelong things, like all those things on that first list with all the things that we want to create for that long term. You know, right. Um, then from there, the middle third is going to be all the shit that I want to make a reality in the next 12 months that I know if that are realistic, you know, right. Like, Hey man, if I work my ass off, if I'm extremely focused, if I'm extremely intentional, boom, I can make these a reality. Now the right third, the far right third is going to be the habits they need to adopt or the habits they need to break, right? So that's going to be kind of the becoming portion of this. So then now every single day, multiple times all throughout the day, like I'm forced to look at long-term goals, targets, immediate 12 month targets, and a reminder of the habits I must adopt and the habits that I must uh, uh, break to make my goals a reality. And like I said, out of sight, out of mind. You know, when you have, I, I was so resistant to vision boards, but my, one of my mentors just pounded it in my head, pounded it in my head, pounded it in my head, even though I wasn't listening to him initially. And then finally one day I decided to listen to him. Um, and I immediately saw the power in him, you know, for, for, before that I was like, what is this kindergarten, man? This is all woo woo bullshit. Like we you know whatever. Um, but it's just too, like the more that we have our goals, like right in front of our face, the more that we manifest on them, visualize on, we can see them. Also, I find out all the time, you know, like I have one up here as far as my habits, you guys can't see this right now, but it's, hey, it says right in here, I will not negotiate with myself. So it's okay. Here's my commitments. And then every single day I find myself, ah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that today. I'll do that tomorrow. Now I'm, now I'm negotiating with myself. I look up this thing. I will not negotiate with myself. So then it forces me to get into the right mindset, the right actions, the right behaviors. Like, no, this is a commitment that you set that you're going to do today. We know that success is only reserved for those that are committed. You are going to take action on this thing today because you are somebody that's committed to making your goals a reality. We know that success only reserved for the committed, not the interested, right? So just keeps that constant reminder, you know, right? You know, on this stuff. Okay, now step number six is now we come up with, okay, what is this strategy plan? Like, what is their strategy plan? Like, so if, it, if it's business related, now you're going to have probably some health goals on here, family goals, you're going to have, have a plan for each. So but let's just speak a business. Okay, like what is my strategy plan? to make sure that I got the most effective plan to get me from where I'm at to making sure my 12 month goals are a reality. So I, and when I'm talking about a plan, plan with a great plan, it will have precision. Like what exactly you're going to be doing daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, how much of that thing, like what, what, with precision, what is the most effective plan to get you from point A to point B um, to making your goals a reality. So you got to identify that strategy plan. That strategy plan is, what you are going to be taking action on again, day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out, that if you follow to a T, you are guaranteed to make your goals a reality, right? So you got to invest the time to make sure that you got the right strategy plan. And then the last step, step number seven is assessing your systems in your environment to make sure that you have the supporting systems in the supporting environment to execute on your strategy plan to make your goals a reality. This is going to help you eliminate all those distractions. This is going to make sure that because systems exist to, I mean, all a system is, is something that is in place um, for your, your strategy plan to live within the instructions, right? So, cause you're, you're, we got your, your strategy plan. 
And then we got your processes. Processes are the step-by-step -step actions of the strategy plan. Systems is just essentially, okay, where do those processes live, aka the instructions live, so then that way I can do them the same way each and every single day, every single time, sure things don't get missed and do them in the most effective, efficient way. You know, so I want to make sure I got the right supporting systems and then make sure that I'm setting up my environment to make it as easy as possible to win, difficult as possible to lose, to making sure those actions are a reality. You know, um, so a lot of people, one of the reasons why the goals fall short is, look, you got to be able to execute on a plan for a long enough period of time to be able to start to see the fruits of those labors, which all makes sense, right? You know, um, but most people aren't willing, you know, or they don't set up with the right systems or the right environment. So they set themselves up for failure. So they're not able to execute for a long enough period of time to make those, you know, goals transition into a reality. So this stuff becomes really important. Um, and if you guys don't know, you know, what the best strategy plan is and how to set up your systems and environment to make sure that you are executing on your strategy plan. If you don't know those things and you like my help with those things, 100% for free, no strings attached, 100% for free. I'm offering these um, up until September 7th. So the date's almost here where they're going to be cut off, but you got a couple extra weeks here, a couple more weeks to be able to schedule this. You can schedule a 100% call with me personally. Well, I'm going to spend 60 minutes with you. We're going to break down where your business is at what your 12 month goals are, what your long-term goals are, what you're currently doing, what your biggest obstacles are. Then based on that, I'm going to map out exactly what I recommend that you do based on your unique situation, your strengths, your weakness, all of those things. I'm going to map out exactly what I like recommend that you do. If we were to switch shoes and I was in your shoes, your situation, you know, um, in your exact shoes, here's exactly what I would do to get you from where you're at to where you want to go. So that way you know exactly what to execute on. I can promise you. We will not leave this free coaching call without you knowing exactly what you must do to get from where you're at to where you want to go. Now, I can't execute for you. You got to go out there and do the execution, but I can make sure you, you're like a horse with the blinders on where we eliminate all that you know chaos, give you full clarity of exactly what you need to do to get from where you're at to where you want to go. So if you want to schedule that, go to www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. All right, so these are the seven steps at least that I have found of the most effective way of goal setting when it comes to how to identify our goals, but then how to make those goals turn into a reality. Um, and, and, you know, look, this stuff can take a while, like to really put this stuff in place. You know, um, I'll schedule, I mean, each year when I re-go through this process, I take a couple days where I lock myself in a room, like a couple full days, like, you know, two, sometimes three, 10 hour days each, you know, um, no distractions, wherever I really map this stuff out and, you know, uh, put that, that, time into this because you know what we put into something is what we get out of something you know so the more time that you can put in this the more you know intentional methodical that you are on this the more powerful they're going to become yeah you know, otherwise you can just choose to live like 99 percent of the rest of the population um that isn't intentional but then that just gets to the end of this life and just dies with a massive heart regret you know choice is ours that's the cool thing about it so and i'm not here to judge which choice you want to make totally up to you um but anyway i hope that you found this helpful Truly appreciate all your support. Keep crushing, keep kicking ass, and I will see you next time. Peace.